So uh, Val was kind enough to let me borrow his Amiga X1000, which is a uh, fantastic system. Um, I have uh, selected a few games for us to uh, take a look at today. Um, I'm running the uh, the audio board, so if it's too loud, then uh, I apologize. So I've been doing the Amiga games things for a while now. We have about 30 minutes, and then I have to uh, kind of take off, so we'll have some fun. Uh, first game, very simple. This is available on, um, excuse me, available from uh, the Emmy Store. It's called a Frog Game. It's uh, not very expensive, just a couple bucks. Um, designed by uh, Endwicker. Um, basically, you can play one or two player. You have a frog, and the job is to jump across the pond and collect uh, flies before the other guys get some. Not super exciting. The, the way you play is you have two actions. You can uh, jump with one mouse click and then you stick your tongue out with the other mouse click. But you got to be careful. See that green one? See the other guy got knocked out? Oh, I got knocked out. You can play two player. You can have two people playing. Oh. Uh, I don't know if it's two mice. I think it's a keyboard and mouse. I don't have uh, another person to play with. No, you only you're trying to grab the flies and not get those little green ones. So like that that guy you got because he got sick because he ate a sick fly. So there's actually some challenge here. There's it's it's there is some strategy. I think I'm kicking his butt, but then again I'm a person and I should. Okay, this is a frog game. Very simple game. But a nice way to spend a few minutes on your uh, on your Amiga. Okay, that's a frog game. We're going to go quick here. Next, I wanted to try this uh, port that popped up onto um, OS4 Depot quite recently. It's called Cannonball. You notice that it says uh, Outrun. Let's see, up, down, left, right, accelerate break, gear, start, coin in. Oh, there should be music for this. I'm not sure if the music is coming out. Hold on one second. No, it might be happening. No, I've muted it. It should be there. Hmm. Okay. We'll give that a try. It was working earlier. It, no, it's going to the board. So anyway, we might not have sound for us this apologize. So the way it works is you uh, you actually have to download the ROMs. What's interesting about this game is that they um, so you got to insert coins. That's that's the hard part. So what this what we're looking at is a reimplementation of the Outrun video game. So they didn't write Outrun. They called Cannibal. They didn't write it. What they did is they wrote the arcade machine that reads the ROMs. So you have to get the ROMs and plug them in, and you get the game. But what's nice about that is it's not running emulated. It's using all the original content. It's a brand new game just using the original content from the ROMs. So if you like the OutRun game, uh, it's really uh, nice to use. So give me one second. I'll see if I can figure out how to get the coin in there. So press coin in. I'm going to do four this time. Menu's five. Okay, you know what it was? The one key is the special key. That's why. Okay, here we go. Aha! Here we go. I think it's manual gear, so I'm going to blow the engine. So this is, this is Outrun, not as a clone. But this is a, a re-implementation of the game, so it's a fresh PowerPC Amiga OS 4 port. Oop, I'm off screen here. Uh-oh. No, no, no. Must be set to automatic, which is good. Let's go drive. So you can see it, it plays very nicely, you got the full sound. You can also go change the music piece, but I have that off. It's all implemented, very fast playing because it's been rewritten for Amiga OS 4 just using the original ROM. So hats off to the developer 
this is the uh, Amigo X1000, obviously. It's the best we got. And we're getting a solid 30 frames a second. No problem at all. Okay, so there's Outrun. It's, uh, it's a fun game. It's a good one. It, it stands the test of time. I guess I took the fork in the road. Okay, that's enough of this. We gotta move on. So, highly recommend it. You do need to get ROMs. The ROMs I had were actually renamed, or named incorrectly, so I had to uh, make some changes there. Next up, um, this is uh, Emicraft. So, you might have heard of the Minecraft craze that all the kids are playing today. Um, it's a very basic game, there's no instructions. Spacebar jumps. Uh, the W key moves forward. The uh, mouse buttons do stuff. I uh, see it here. I have like a piece of plant. I can change this. I've already started playing a little bit. The number keys along the top move the bottom there as I select the different options. So if I want to go to the stone pickaxe, I would choose the stone pickaxe. Um, I've cut a little hole down here so it can start going underground to mine some more stone. You got to be careful as you're digging down because you can trap yourself and then you have to dig yourself out. And you can jump and break stones. And there's all sorts of things going on down here. If you keep going deep enough, you can find um, lava and water and all sorts of craziness. The game's central tenant, just like Minecraft. Oh, we're a little trapped. There we go. Uh, the game's central tenant, just like Minecraft, is based on crafting. To save you some time, you have to press the E key. I've never actually killed one of the animals before. They're too fast for me. Yeah. So with the E key, it brings up the crafting screen. And here you can see what recipes you have. And there's more recipes to be found as you move through. So the way it works is you pick your basic item like a plank. A plank requires one piece of wood. We have five of those. So if I hit the craft button, you can notice that our planks are increasing. If I wanted to make a stick, that requires some planks. If I wanted to make a uh, wooden, a stone sword, it says need crafting table. So you actually have to make the crafting table that you use to make the rest of the stuff. So just to reiterate, oh, chickens are easy to kill. Where do you find the recipes? Uh, I don't know. I haven't gone that far. I think as you collect new materials and you get further along, then the recipes reveal themselves. But if I go to the crafting table here and I choose the stone sword, it's a stick and it's uh, two pieces of cobblestone. So notice I crafted it and it popped up here. So now if we put it there, and we can put these things in our inventory. And again, there's no docks, so you have to basically figure it out. Um, if I click on uh, seven, we're now using the sword. That should kill the chicken. Oh, and we got a feather. So. It, uh, where, yeah, we have a feather now. So if you connect, collect string and feather, you can build a bow. And so you can shoot things that are running away from you. Um, and from a, a level of technology, you, you saw on the crafting screen that you can actually make TNT. So I haven't found a, a vein of coal yet. Um, if we go back to the crafting table, it'll tell us. Yeah, so you have to make the gunpowder, make all the pieces, and then you can make that. And then you need fire as well. Um, so it's a crafting game, I mean, uh, immensely popular. Microsoft paid the creators $2 billion. I don't think the creator of this on the Amiga side is going to get a $2 billion check from Microsoft, but he can certainly ask. Um, so we need sand and we need gunpowder. So you explore the world and you find these things. There's also bad guys that pop up that will try to kill you and you have to kill them. Uh, you can make armor. So we can make diamond leggings. We can make flint and steel. An iron chest plate is an iron ingot. Iron ingots come from somewhere. Oh, here's a bucket. I guess you have to find iron ingots. I guess when you get to the iron things. You can make a house. You can make a fort. You can build up. You can do all sorts of just crazy, crazy things in this game. Wood panels. Oh, what do I need? I need more planks. I have to go chop down more trees. It's a, a pretty... Uh, it's a pretty, uh, it's the type of game that definitely gets you uh, hooked on it. So here we have four ladders, and now we have some planks. So if I go and do number four, uh, sorry, number two. I, I haven't quite figured out uh, this part of it. The Q key throws it on the ground. 
But there's a way to like deploy stuff. But I haven't uh, figured that out yet. So it's, the game is all about exploration, all about learning. Um, and then you can build, and people have built like Starship Enterprise by carving away. If you go to YouTube and search Minecraft, you'll see amazing things. So that's the M in Minecraft. A couple controls, very basic, but it's a fun game. You can play it for a little bit of time. Uh, next up is another uh, uh, Wickler X game. This is uh, Swamp Defense. This is the second version, so it's a little bit more story to it. Um, some new creatures, some new, cr uh, some new weapons. I'm not going to play this too much, but you basically have your um, guys coming, and then we can put our little shooter dude here, and then let's see, let's throw a, goo a gooer, yeah, you're trying to kill the bad guys, so the old man is throwing the uh, toothpaste on him to slow him down, and then, oh, we're out of money, so we need to kill a few more to get up some more money so that we can try to kill these guys. So well, I think we're kind of I think we're not going to make it. We're going to lose too much. Uh oh. I think I just lost. Yep, I lost. It's this the genre is called tower defense. Oh, this is the second wave. But we're trying to collect enough money so we can get more people to start shooting the the bad critters here. So right now I'm at 141, and as this guy shoots them. Hopefully he'll kill. There, now we can go. So now we have uh, multiple shooters, multiple people. No, they just do it automatically. They just do their thing. So my strategy is all wrong here. I should have put the goop person uh, up front, like here, so that as they're coming through, they get slowed down, and then put the gauntlet of shooters. So there's some strategy to it, uh, all the rest of it. And you can move through the different... Uh, you move through the map, exactly. So you can buy that on Emmy store as well, which is great. Uh, this is one that was requested by our good friend Trevor. Um, again, and uh, and Lickers uh, and Wicker Z uh, X. So here is a bubble shooter game, pretty simple. You have your uh, your bubbles and you have your uh, targets. Uh, you can change out the colors, although these are the same. So I think if I click here, it changes to purple. That's yellow. Very, uh, very common game uh, on a lot of platforms. Ton of mobile phones ship with these things. They did a nice job. The graphics are good. Um, some nice gameplay. Let's go to green and we'll fire it off. The, and you can bank them off the walls. Um, uh, because the way it works is you're trying to, you get a pop when you get three in a row. So I pop red. So now if I go to yellow, I can drop that whole chain by dropping the yellow. I, I did, I did. So you can drop those over, and if I can cut the other side here. Oh, I missed it. Yep, yep, yep. Can you choose the color you're shooting, or is it random? It comes up. So you can choose, you can change the color, but you can't choose the colors. Oh, that was a big drop. So if I get this right, and then if I get that right, and that right, we win. So, uh, Trevor said he's on uh, level 190, and he's stuck. Uh, you can buy specials. So, you can buy these different uh, features. So, if I wanted to, to send the exploder, uh, it blows the ones that are up there. And then, what does this do? Oh, it pushes it back up. So, at, at 190, when you got a bunch of money, you're buying these things. It's coming down fast. You're pushing it back up, all that kind of stuff. So, really common game. It first stopped up, uh, popped up in the arcades on the Neo Geo, and it was wildly successful in the arcades. Um, so they've done a faithful uh, port of that. Um, next is a game that just popped up on the Amiga. Um, it's been, uh, it was originally developed under Linux, so we need to actually modify this and replace the penguin with like a check mark or something. Um, if anyone here remembers Paradroid, old game from the Commodore 64, really excellent game, a lot of fun. This is based on Paradroid, but it is a uh, RPG, so um, so it's uh, it's more of a story. Sorry, a little sign that has to be done here. Um, it's more story based versus um, uh, Paradroid, which is very much arcade based. 
So we're the penguin, we're clicking around. You can interact with the world and the people in the world, so we can click on the old man, the old guy, and then we can have a conversation with him. Obviously, I'm going fast here just to show it off. And there's like an evil robot that shows up. He says, target acquired, scanning, non-human and life form, uh, current status unknown. I can say hello, and he says uh, that he's going to kill us, a Lenarian. Destroy. Destroy, which I mean, I agree with. I think we should destroy all Lenarians, right? So we can punch the uh, robot and kill him. Oh. Yay, we killed the robot. And then you can collect the armor and the wrench and get all the different pieces. And then he drops some stuff. So you can uh, walk around this world and explore. The old Paradroid had a great mechanic for combat. That was one of the coolest things about it. Um, the storyline for Paradroid, um, I think this is somewhat similar, was that you're on a spaceship and you're a robot and you actually interface to other robots and take them over and you upgrade your robot and they have different features and you're trying to clear the hostile robots out of the ship. Um, I haven't played this enough to know what the... Uh, what, what all the things are. But there's like an inventory screen, you can get different levels, uh, different items, a uh, bunch of stuff like that. So this is a brand new port, just showed up on uh, OS4 Depot, and uh, I'll be playing it a bit more. Uh, very happy to have it, because I love Free Droid, or sorry, Paradroid. And then, um, let's see, this is the uh, Tails, the, the, the uh, yeah, the what is it called? It's the secret, the secret of Middle City. The secret of Middle City. So this is actually a fairly ambitious project put together by some folks in uh, in um, Italy. It's a Hollywood game. Um, they're using a lot of the Hollywood effects. It's a point-and-click adventure. Simon the Sorcerer, uh, Loom, Monkey Island, those types of things. Um, but they put a lot of, of effort into it, and it's available uh, multi-platform. So we can um, start a new game, and any the music. And so you can see it's very colorful, very cartoony. But they did a, they did a really good job on the uh, the interface. Have a nice day. So we can go and click on the different areas. So here our character walks in. This is a little bit of, a, of an intro. The, uh, the game was definitely made with Italian uh, sensibilities. <laughs> Very cartoony. And it's uh, very text-based here. <clears throat> Once you get through the dialogue, you can get to the uh, game itself. <laughs> and you can also turn the dialogue on and off. So it's the sort of game that's not high-paced. It's much more thinking, collecting stuff, uh, moving around. Are we watching? Yes. So, yeah, exactly, very turn-based. I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing something here or not. Oh, I think this is where I'm supposed to click and talk. Uh oh. No. Okay, so now we have the magnifying glass. So we can look at the city map. Talk to the different people. Oh, it's actually, it is just looking around. Isn't it? No, we can't click there. The mighty agent Cox. <laughs> yeah. Very Italian sensibilities. So it's not a it's not a fast paced game, but it's a very rich game in terms of content. They've been working on it for years and years and years and years. Um, so lots of uh, little details about the spider, police station main hall. I think there's like an inventory screen you can call up when you get uh, into the main game. So it's one of those things that takes a while to play, but uh, well done. 
I don't know if it's going to be for sale in Emmy store. I think they've released a CD version you can buy. So again, Hollywood game, uh, well put together. Um, we got two more. This is uh, a fun one. This popped up a couple of months ago on um, uh, on OS4 Depot. Again, it's a Hollywood game. It's 50, 70 megs. And it's uh, Who Wants to Be an Amiga Guru? And it's all in German, which is more fun. And so it's actually styled like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Okay, who, who knows this one? 1618, right? Let's see. Oh my. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that one. My German's not very. I don't know any German. So it's like, uh, anyone got a guess? <laughs> oh, okay. What does that say? <laughs> Which one do you think it is? What is it? What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> ah, we have a German in the audience. But some of these things you can understand, right? So, World of Warcraft, Bard's Tale, or Zach McCracken. Ah, World of Warcraft. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you can actually kind of learn German. <laughs> and it's got like the 50% thing. Um, but a lot of times, just looking at the answers, you can kind of tell. So, it's a nice game. They put a lot of effort into it. Like I said, it's 70 megabytes. There's a ton of graphics, lots of music, lots of good stuff in there. It's available on OS4 Depot. Um, the last one to look at uh, is the new game from Hyperion. We're very lucky to have this. This is Gorky17. Running it in a workbench here. So, Gorky17 is a game that came out probably the 2001 time frame, maybe maybe a tad earlier, um, and it was being ported by OS uh, by Hyperion for a long time, but they've been busy with a lot of other stuff, like making this intro animation. So, um, it's a, a game they got licensed to, and they're just now making it available to us. I've actually never played it; I've never seen it. Um, but as they announced at the German show a couple weeks ago. Uh, the Enwecker guys uh, spent a lot of time on the game engine and playing. And I was watching Darren Stevens yesterday play it quite a bit. Uh, it's You have multiple characters. Um, it's also fairly turn-based in terms of what's happening. I'm going to skip through the intro. You have to buy it to see the rest of that. So, somewhere in Poland in 2009. Those are our characters. Uh, Gurkha 17, military experiments, why are we here, we don't know, we're here with smallpox, so they're having a conversation, let's get to the action, okay. There we go. So we can click and the characters will walk and they'll follow. And I think I can click on another character and make them primary. So again, it's a point and click adventure, kind of like what we saw with uh, Secrets of Middle City. But this is designed to be much more of a uh, combat type thing as opposed to a cartoony game. It's got a lot of great awards. Um, I guess we're in the, uh, the combat phase. Out of range. Do I have a gun? We haven't got a gun yet. So we'll punch it. Yeah, that's what you do. Punch the evil military experiment. Experiment. It's the enemy's turn. Uh oh, I fed him one of our guys. That's gonna hurt. Oh, player turn. Let's see, who's got a pistol? What is that to me? Oh, we don't have any skills yet. So I'll walk over here, right mouse button to go to attack mode, and we'll punch the bad guy. So I'll click on this other dude. 
there's this guy. Right click to combat mode and we'll punch the bad guy. Because, you know, that's what I would do. And then he can step away. And then we'll click on this guy, walk up. Right click, punch. Yay! Do we get him? No, he's still alive. Oh, he's about halfway. So I'll have this guy walk away. I think he's our brute. And then you click the uh, end turn button here. And then down at the bottom you can see the health. But it's puzzles, it's action, you can get different weapons. It's sort of like Infocom, uh, but more real time uh, walking around. Ha, you're dead now, bad guy. Oh, plus two. So we'll walk up. Oops. Woo! End turn. Dark music, dark content. I didn't pick up a weapon yet. No flamethrower. It'd be nice to start off with a machine gun or something. As opposed to have to fight the crazy uh, alien science experiments. I think we're going to get him. He's almost gone. Bam. Yay! Now we killed him. Victory is ours. Oh, we got 24 experience points for one stinks. Yep. So there's like things to explore, and d the way I was watching Darren play it yesterday, he played it for like an hour and uh, checking things out. And there's some corpses that we can loot. Always fun to do. Yep. So that's the uh, Gorky 17 game. So we'll uh, exit this, and uh, that's it. So those are the games I wanted to show off. There's been a few advancements. A lot of those were commercial titles, which is great. You know, the more commercial titles we get, the more money people make, and hopefully they make more stuff. So as always, support your uh, Amiga community developers. Buy some games, play them, enjoy. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. I'm Audi. I'm Audi.